Well, welcome to another episode of Rim Shots with Sean on the Rock Rage Radio Network, brought to you by Barstools and Bantock. That's a mouthful, but uh, I got it out. I'm here with the boys from Twice Removed. They're in Connecticut, and uh, I'm here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, but we're on the East Coast. So, uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to try to moderate this, because sometimes when there's a lot of voices, it can get out of hand, but I... I I sort of see myself as a good moderator, so see what happens. So, Rick, I'll start with you. Um, you may or you probably know this. Uh, you know, uh, up here in Canada, there's a little band called The Tragically Hip, and their biggest album was called Twice Removed. I'm sure that you guys don't have any uh, correlation to that. No, we took our name from uh, actually from Robin Trower, uh, Twice Removed from yesterday. From yesterday, Gary and Roland, are huge fans. They actually started this band a while back. And um, so that it came from Robin Trower, a huge influence on us. Right on. And just, just before we go any further, uh, Rick, Roland, Mike, Gary, I remembered that. Uh, just You guys just go around and just tell everybody what, uh, what instruments you play in the band and what you do in the band. I'm primarily a bass, but I do play guitar, um, a little bit of keyboard, but not very much, and backing vocals. Okay. Uh, drums, background vocals, some lead, and percussion. Fantastic. Guitar, a little bit of keyboards and backing vocals. No, uh, guitar and lead vocals. Got it. I got it. So, uh, okay. So here, uh, Christina, she, she, she's been telling me for a couple of weeks, I need to talk to you guys and I'm glad we were finally able to get this going. Um, tell me a little bit about who you guys are, what you do, what your scenes like, um, you know, what, how things were, are, you know, going for you guys in, in Connecticut. Yeah, okay. fine, yeah. uh, we've been around since uh, 2016. Uh, Gary and Roland actually started the band. I came along in uh, 2020 on the second album. And we just got together with, there's not a whole lot of uh, original music in uh, Connecticut or New England for that matter. Uh, we just started playing what we love to do. Um, and we're right now, we're about to begin our fourth, but we just, uh, we've got our third that just came out on Tundra. And it's great. It's everywhere. And we just, we love what we do. Uh, we got influences from all over the place, as we said, twice removed. Uh, I'm from a heavier metal background. Some of us are from doo from Elvis, from just about any kind of genre you can think of. We just kind of mash it all together and come up yeah. with uh, some pretty good stuff. Well, oftentimes, Roland, I'll go to you. Oftentimes, that's the best, best way, especially when, you know, you get... You know, two, three, four, five different influenced people, and you get them all in one room and put it in a blender. You never quite know what's going to come out, and sometimes it doesn't work out so great. Uh, but based upon what I heard from you guys, it's, it seems to be going quite well. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we, we, everybody comes up with everybody's a writer in the band, so I mean, not every not every idea that we have sticks to the wall, but mm. you know. One guy comes up with an idea, and everybody just puts their little stank on it. And so far, it's been working, and right people on. seem to enjoy it. And uh, well, it's yeah. it's good. It's good that uh, you guys have that. I mean, um, so I I work with an artist up here in Canada, and uh, um, so uh, her and her co-writer handle all the they they write all the tunes, right? So I don't get mm -hmm. my nose involved in it at all. I play on them. I'm a drummer myself, um, and then I I. I promote them, and um, that's what works for us. Do you guys ever, you know, Mike? Do you ever lock any uh, horns or you know bat any heads there when you guys are trying to put something together? Or if somebody fighting for their piece of the playground in terms of songs? No, it doesn't seem that way. Um, I've read a lot of stories of a lot of bands and people that have encountered that. It seems like it's quite common, and it's got to be. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to get two people to agree on stuff. Never mind four or more. And it's going on two years with these guys, and there hasn't been any of that. We'll, we'll more or less the suggestions go, hey, instead of this, maybe try that. And sometimes that new idea works, and other times it's like, nah, the old one was better. Let's stick to Plan A first. And it's been smooth. This is one of the smoothest projects I I've ever been with. And Mike's the new guy. He's still getting used to us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the honeymoon phase, right? Yeah. Um, so, Gary, I, I always like to ask this, and I've, I've interviewed a couple of people, a couple of bands in Connecticut in that area before. I actually have family ties in the area. I had a, a great uncle that lived just outside of Hartford. Uh, go Whalers, because we're hockey fans up here. But um, explain 
to anybody that's never been what your scene is like, what, what things are like down there? Well, mostly cover music works here. Unfortunately, we, we all play in cover bands too, so we can go out and make money to record. But um, there's, there's a small a small window of opportunity for original bands, um, which we hope to, we played a couple times out so far. We've got some nice, we were received very nicely. Um, that would be what we really want to do is go out and play the stuff, let people hear it because I mean, but the, the up here, the scene, unfortunately is mostly, they want to hear something they heard on the radio. And that's a damn shame because sure. we're all about originals, you know. We'd be, we'd be huge in Europe. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, but there's, there's, you. there's Sorry, a bar scene out here. I mean, uh, we play in original uh, cover bands, and we draw great crowds, and 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 we play originals when in between some of that stuff, just so we can get our stuff out. Right. So we make the CDs. We we take them to the gigs. If anybody wants them, they sometimes they buy them. Sometimes we give them away for free. It's it's tough because nobody. Good owns a CD player anymore. It's, yeah, it's all secret. Yeah. download, you know, yeah. so. They don't even um, have them in trucks anymore, but um, uh, I, I'd be interested just, just be, before we, we move along here. So the cover scene, so up here in Halifax, the way the cover scene works is, you know, the, it's guarantees or it's ticketed events pretty much, right? Like, um, so, you know, you might play for the door and there are some people that still play for exposure, but do, is it is it a paying gig in the cover always, scene down there? Yeah. Always. It's like, we're not going to play. I have, we'll do benefits for cancer and things like that. We will do that. We but give for, back. Right. For, but for the most, we do a lot of benefits for animals, too. I just did one this weekend, animal cruelty. Right. But we didn't take a dime for it. Right. For the most part, yeah. you, you, you're you talented. You get paid for what you do here. They might not pay you very well, but at least, you know, we're not playing for free. It's it's you got to make money if and you got talent. Some of the younger bands, they there are still pay-to-play shows. Where yeah. you know you have to sell a certain amount of tickets to actually get on the stage, which we're we're beyond that. We don't do that anymore. We we played that game when we were younger, and you know the up and coming bands still do that. And, and we're no longer it's younger. kind of a shame <laughs> that bands actually have to do that to get exposure. But uh, so it runs the gamut from that to you know getting a, a decent paying gig to pay the bills, and and sometimes they don't pay the bills, but they pay enough to you know, pay the studio bills. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and I mean, what, here's one of the things that, um, uh, you know, the exposure route and all that, I mean, there's still an awful lot of buy on shows. Or I've been talking to people where they're paying, you know, five to 10 grand a show to get on a national tour. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and basically the, the rub is, you know, sell merch to make it up. And I've talked to people that have made all kinds of money in merch. Uh, now, some of the venues are getting a little more, um, you know, enterprising and trying to muscle in and grab a percentage of that. So, I mean, it's tough, right? So uh, when you guys are playing your originals, are you staging your own shows to do that? How is that, how is that happening? Well, I mean, a lot of the venues around here are getting, I mean, a lot of bands aren't coming around anymore because the venues are taking a huge chunk of the merch and they, right. they just, they'll, they'll pass Connecticut because of that. And we don't, we don't, we're not really, at that caliber, we don't follow the. Uh, uh, we're not on a tour of a band with that caliber, so we haven't had to worry about that just yet. But um, it, it's a shame that that's where the music business is right now. Um, uh, most bands these days do make their money um, touring, and if they're taking all the money that they're making touring, and the venues are taking it from the merch, then it makes it even tougher to make a living doing it. Yeah, the, um, you know, the music business right now, I mean, I shouldn't say right now, because I mean, depending upon where you're kind of fitting in the stream, you know, it, it, it's messy. I mean, there are ways to make money. Uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman that you guys probably have heard of him. He lives in your neck of the woods, Matt Starr, uh, played with Ace Frehley. Oh, yeah. and, I talked to him. Um, so. Yeah. And I mean, Matt's a guy who he's figured out a way to, you know, to take himself from a commodity to a brand to, to getting paid and, and certain people can do that. Um, I guess in, in, in your scene, are, are you guys teaming up with some other bands to kind of do, you know, double or triple bills? Or are you just, yeah, yeah that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. And you generally don't make money for that. No, so nothing, but we just want to do it to get out there so people can actually hear us. And and we want the music to have fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we do we have fun doing it too. Definitely. It's still it's still a good time for us. 
But. So I hate doing this, but I do it uh, just to give my viewers and my listeners an idea from, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. But I hate the, I hate the term comparable or comparables, but if they, my viewers hadn't heard of you guys before and you were to offer some comparables to say, hey, you know, here's my elevator pitch. Who's, here's who we sound like. Who, who would you put out there? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, we we just got a review in the magazine, uh, Howling Wolf. What was that? How uh, 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 Cry of the Wolf for magazine. And they put us as like a little bit of Led Zeppelin, which I don't hear that. Uh, a little right. bit of AC, a little bit of AC DC, and I don't hear maybe a little bit of that. He said yeah. Buck Cherry. Buck, Buck Cherry. Cherry out there. I don't listen to Buck Cherry, but right. I'm yeah. sure it's. We, we have a very '70s vibe, so it it goes, yeah. runs the gamut of a little bit of Boston, a little bit of Thin Lizzy, some Sticks, yeah. Rick Derringer. And then it gets heavy. We have a couple heavy. Yeah, and then it gets a little heavier, so it it, it can go on, you know. Mm. And then we have a doo wop ish song on the middle <laughs> of the last album. So yeah. we don't like to be, we don't pigeonhole <laughs> ourselves into calling us metal or rock. We do a lot of everything. I've always said you could ask 15 different people and get 15 different yeah, answers. <laughs> it's, it's almost AOR, I think, to a degree. Yeah. That's well, isn't that interesting? You see these, uh, you know, top 25 guitar players of all time and top 25 drummers of all time. And you know, they give you the impression that there's somebody sitting in the club just all knowing, saying, These, this is the list, but your list might be different than my list might. So it's like, for people that, to pick those out, that's what they're hearing. Right. Um, but all that kind of smorgasbord of, of different bands, I mean, that's interesting because I'm hearing some prog, like, I love Sticks, probably one of my favorite bands of all time. Rush? Yeah. Thin Lizzy? Rush I mean, fan. pardon me? You got to be a Rush fan. Honest to God, so here's the media that I am. <laughs> I, I grew up loving Kiss. I always I like to say I did my yes. best to put Gina oh, yeah. Paul's kids through school. Um, I Neil Peart, absolutely without a doubt, probably one of the best that ever lived. Well, no, no question. Uh, I did. I I grew up a Triumph fan. Uh, yes. I'm a Canadian. Um, uh, Kim Mitchell. I had the pleasure or, or otherwise of opening for Kim Mitchell a couple times. And actually oh. a good buddy of mine actually plays drums with him right now. And um uh Kim's a, he's an interesting cat, man. He's been around forever. And little known fact, Billy Sheehan almost played Max Webster. A lot of people didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. I saw Max Webster and opened up for Kansas. Oh yeah. And, uh, no, they were for but they just blew Kansas away. So really good oh, guys in this country, uh uh, uh, the uh, the bass player, the drum—they don't really play that much anymore. But you know, it's like you know any sports figure. You run into them in a coffee shop, and they're renowned, right? They're these figures that have sort of cemented their their uh, legacy forever. So it's kind of cool. Um, have, were you guys influenced by any Canadian music? I mean, I always love to talk to my neighbors down south because it's um, you know, sometimes they they don't know of any, and then sometimes they know of a lot. Were you guys? Into any Canadian music growing up? Rush, um, yeah. Tony Hatch, oh, yeah, Mitchell, obviously Max Webster, and there was one more Headpins. The Headpins, I love yes. the Headpins. So I'll tell you a funny story, true, true story. <laughs> uh, Dar Darby Mills is is who basically helped me put this podcast to a, a national oh. level in Canada. She came on the show. And she's become a dear friend, and um, their uh, stage manager is a very good buddy of mine. Uh, they're out in Vancouver. Uh, you mentioned Coney Hatch, man. That, uh, you know, I saw that's... them. I saw them. They opened up for Iron Maiden. Yeah. They were awesome. Let's not forget about April Wine, too. Yeah. Uh, they just lost their lead guitar. Their well, Miles, Miles passed away. He grew up 10 minutes from him where I'm sitting right now. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And uh, a very good friend of mine um, played guitar with him in his blues band. And uh, God love him. The thing, the thing with us where we are uh, – we're very Celtic sounding in terms of a, a scene and very folk sounding in terms of a scene. So April wine was the band that were like, well, if they're a rock band and they can get it in Nova Scotia, they give the rest of us hope. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's the kind of that. Um, I, I love the, um, what you guys were saying in terms of influences. How many, how many shows do you guys get on the, on the original side of year? Good. Not much. Not very much. Yeah. See, oh. I mean, it's tough because there's other bands out there and there's there's more heavier metal out here and people want to hear heavy metal. And we're and, not that. And right. we're not that. We're very, uh, I guess you would say, pop and more radio friendly than they are. And we mm. do four-part harmonies 
and they don't. They just love to, you know, chug away on the on the drop D's and we call it C's. I, I call it Cookie Monster Rock. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. The yeah. Yeah, so but, it's it's we, we it's like tough. the context of our music. We we like to put vocal harmonies. We like like double guitar stuff. We I mean like Thin Lizzy. We do a couple things like that. So nice. um, we're I'd say we're more seventies rock than anything. That's awesome. Thin Lizzy is another great one because I'll tell you I uh, last April uh, one of the bands that I play in we get to do a wedding in Ireland, which was very cool. And I visited Phil uh, Phil Linock's grave. And his house that he had, uh, and I tell you that man is bigger than Bono. He's bigger than Rod Stewart. You go to Dublin, there's pictures of him everywhere. It's incredible. Wow. It really is. Yeah, awesome. And you know, you you guys mentioned you'd be big in Europe. One of the one of the tips that I will give you is if you guys can ever get over there and play, I would do it in a heartbeat. It's so cool, man. Such a great yeah, spot. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow, right um, so the album, the, the third album you said is just out right now. You're you're prepping for the the fourth. Um, give us uh, next Monday night. We go in to record. We start recording the fourth album next Monday night. Oh, nice. And where where you guys uh, record? Uh, it's a, a local studio. It's um, Oxford Circus. Yep. It's uh, owned by a guy named Jeff Canada. He's uh, used to be in a band in the '70s called Jasper Rath. Um, he's amazing. Yeah, local, local he's hero. Strong. They're early prog rock. Yeah, yeah. If you like sticks, you would have liked Jasper Rat. You should oh, yeah. look nice. those up on Jasper Rat. They yeah, were he's, he also puts a lot of stuff out on uh, YouTube under the name Kanada. Just okay. amazing, amazing he's stuff. Very prog. Amazing. He's very prog. Amazing guy. He and, had a band uh, called Archangels. Yeah, he was in a band called Archangel for a while in the eighties. Yeah. They he's, were more pop though. He's he's not just a recording engineer. He's like a fifth member of the band. Mm -hmm. That but, uh, that wasn't Archangels with the. Uh, uh, no, it was definitely not. I know who you're talking about. It was yeah, no. different band. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, not um, Sexton, all those guys. Yeah, Charlie Sexton and uh, no. it was Stevie Ray Vaughan's uh, rhythm section with uh, the right. other two fellows. Oh, really? Yeah, double trouble. <laughs> Uh, we'll do this all night. I'm the man. If you guys are ever on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and you get some useless music question, give me a call because oh, me too, <laughs> me too. Honest to God, um, yes. I guess last question before we go because I want to uh, you know make sure that uh, uh, people watch this and you know like I said, if people's attention spans are low, but where can they find out more about you guys? Get your music, find out what you're doing, maybe join your mailing list, those types of things. We have uh, we have a site. Uh, if you go to twiceremoved.banzoogle.com, that's kind of our our electronic business card. And from there, I mean, you'll see band reviews. You can listen to a couple of songs, and then there's uh, there's some video. There's some videos on there, and then there's a link to uh, three of our albums where you can download them or you can listen to some previews and get an idea what we. Uh, yeah, that's on Bandcamp. Yep, that will give you a link to bandcamp.com. And we're all on Reverb Nation, so we can look us all individually on Reverb Nation, so we all have under our names. And yep, we're, and we're on Spotify, we're on Amazon Music, we're on iTunes. All, all the all the big ones. All the music. Uh, yep. And, of course, Facebook, YouTube. So we're, you and, and, of course, Christian is singing your praises all the time, and she's uh, she's fantastic. She's, she's a great she's job. She's, oh. a, she's great. She does, I mean... Amazing. Above and beyond. She's really, really a great kid. Oh, for color sure. kids than us. <laughs> Rick, Owen, Mike, Gary, I got it right. You guys, you know, if anybody ever tells you I'm ADHD, I am, but I still have <laughs> the information. Thank you so much for doing this, gentlemen. Thank uh, you. Been a pleasure. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Peace. Have Peace. a good one. Thank you much.